Good morning. If you are able, I invite you to stand with us this morning as we begin worship. We 
guys hear the music out there? Okay. Something switched and it just threw me off. Anyway, we're going to sing The Lion and the Lamb this Palm Sunday. Coming on the clouds, kings and kingdoms will bow down. And every chain will break as broken hearts declare his praise. For who can stop the Lord Almighty? Our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah. He's roaring. chains and every knee will bow before the lion and the lamb every knee will bow before him so open up the gates make way God who comes to save is here to set the captives free. For who can stop the Lord Almighty? Our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah. He's roaring with power and fighting our battles. And every knee will bow before Him. Our God is chains and every knee will bow before the lion and the lamb oh every knee will bow before him who can stop the lord almighty who can stop the lord the songs kind of match Palm Sunday. And if you don't know what Palm Sunday is, Pastor Kyle is going to explain that in a little bit. But before we do that, um, I'd like to welcome you here this morning. If you are a guest with us, there are these welcome home cards in the seats in front of you. And on the back, it just asks for your name, email, or phone number if you'd like to give that information. And we'd love to just welcome you and tell you thank you for joining us. 
Also, around the back on the tables, on the side, um, in the foyer, there are these little business cards. And they're just a little invitation to Easter Sunday with us here at Lakeside Naz. I was hoping to have them last week, and they didn't come in <laughs> until Friday. So we got one week to get these out into the community, and I would love your help if you'd grab a stack of them, if you would like to give those out to friends and family. A personal invitation from someone you know. It's the best way to have people come to church. It's about relationships. It's about love. And that is the meaning of evangelism. So it's about knowing people and sharing the love of Jesus with them. So if you wouldn't mind grabbing a few of these and giving them to friends and family, I would love for you to do that. Um, I'm told I have to announce each Sunday that we have offering plates in the back, and that if you are online with us today, you can give online through lakesidenaz.org. Before we keep going this morning, I'd just like to take a moment to pray and thank God for already being with us and walking with us through each day of the week and preparing our hearts for this morning. Jesus, we love you and we praise you. We thank you for being so good. We thank you for being present in our lives each and every moment, for your Holy Spirit that goes with us no matter where we are. Thank you for being here this morning with us, for loving us and showing your, us your grace and mercy. We love you and praise you. We pray that the sounds of our worship would just bless your heart, because it's all for you, Lord. In your name we pray. Amen. I invite you to stand with me again. We're going to sing Jesus Messiah.
Jesus Messiah, the Lord of all. And then we're going to sing, I see the King of glory coming on the clouds with fire. I love the vision that this song gives of God just coming and bringing us back to him. I see the King of glory coming on the clouds with fire. The whole earth shakes, the whole earth shakes. I see his love and mercy washing over all our sin. The people sing, the people sing. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna. generation rising up to take their place with selfless faith with selfless faith I see a near revival stirring as we pray and seek we're on our we're on our knees. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Show me how to love like you have loved me. Break my heart for what breaks everything I am for your kingdom's cause. As I walk from earth into eternity song um jason griffin had contacted pastor kyle last night saying that heather was going to the emergency room um with pretty high fever that they couldn't control they got it under control um and that they're home this morning trying to get some rest sleeping um but if we would could take this time
to pray for Heather and their family, um, I'd like to do that. And if anyone else has any prayer requests, please let us know. Um, we'd love to be praying for your family, for your friends, um, the people in our community that need it. So let's pray. Lord Jesus, we come to you um, for Heather, for Jason, for their children. And I pray that you would touch Heather's body, that you would be with her throughout this process of chemo, Lord. And that um, you would give the doctors the knowledge to do exactly what they need to do for her, Lord. That your, you or your Holy Spirit just would walk through this whole thing with them. That your presence would be so close and near to them and comfort them. And take away all of their fears. Let them know that we love them this morning and are um, thinking of them, that they are on our hearts and minds. And we just take this moment to take a deep breath and to pray for all of those that don't know you, Lord. We pray that in some way our lives. Um, would look like yours, would look like Lev, and speak to the, our friends and family that don't know you, Lord, that they might come to know you and have a relationship with you. That is the most important thing. Be with Heather and Jason and their family this morning. Be with Mary Lois as she continues to heal, Lord. We thank you for our church family. We thank you for this Palm Sunday. And in your name we pray. Amen. Always hunger for 
heart's always hunger for. Oh, our hearts always hunger. seated. Well, good morning. It is good to see you. I'm going to preach from down here this morning. I just feel like I'm going to be a little excited. I don't know. <laughs> it is Palm Sunday. It is the start of Holy Week. There is a lot that happens from Sunday to Sunday. There is, yeah, your birthday is in this week. That's a part of it. Yeah, that's for our family. You're right. That puts a lot of it in there for us. You're right. All right. So this week is Palm Sunday, and this, the title of my sermon is called The Great Misunderstanding. And the reason is, is Palm Sunday is... It's the triumphal entry, right? People are waving palm branches, and we'll, we'll get to that. And our text this morning is Mark 11, 1 through 11. And let me read it to you. And would you stand with, with me as I read this for you? Um, it says, When Jesus and his followers approached Jerusalem, they came to Bethany, and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, Jesus gave two disciples a task, saying to them, Go into the village over there. As soon as you enter it, you will find tied up there a colt that no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Say, its master needs it, and he will send it back right away. They went and found a colt tied to a gate outside on the street, and they untied it. Some people standing around said to them, what are you doing? Untie the, untying this colt. They told them just what Jesus said, and they left them alone. They brought the colt to Jesus and threw their clothes upon it, and he sat on it. Many people spread out their clothes on the road, while others spread branches cut from the fields. Those in front of them and those who were shouting, Hosanna, blessing on the one who comes in the name of the Lord, blessing on the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest. Jesus entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. After he looked around at everything, because it was already late in the evening, he returned to Bethany with the twelve. This is the word of the Lord for the people of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. In six, the 16th century, century, Spanish conquistadors were trying to name the large peninsula on the eastern side of Mexico. When they spoke to the Mayan people, they were asking, what is this place called? The Mayan people had no clue what they were saying to them. And they said, Yucatan, which actually translates, I do not understand you. And you know what? That is how the Yucatan Peninsula got its name. That is a pretty great misunderstanding, right? Did you know that soon after his presidency, Jimmy Carter found himself in a Japanese college, giving a speech there. To ease the tension and to get everybody on board, he decided to tell a joke. By his own ambition, it wasn't a funny one, but it was short. To his surprise, the Japanese interpreter translated the joke much faster then he spoke it, and in the entire audience burst into laughter. So what was the misunderstanding? The, the President Carter was curious about the Japanese interpretation of his joke, because it was shorter than it should have been, and people laughed much harder than normal. Finally, after much coaxing, the interpreter simply admitted to translating the joke as this. President Carter, total funny story. Everyone must laugh. <laughs> and so they laughed. <laughs> Today is Palm Sunday. It's the day that everyone 
thinks that they have it right, and everyone has it wrong. Okay? So let's look at all of the different players that are in this situation that we have. We have the Romans, we have the Jews, we have the Pharisees and the Sadducees, and we have Jesus, okay? And let's set the scene a little bit on why these people thought the way that they did. In the first verse, we see the context of where they were geographically, okay? If you were to look, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be this way, okay? If you're looking this way, the temple's here. There was a big mount. The Mount of Olives was right here. Bethphage was here. Bethany was here. And they were kind of coming up this way to come this way. North is here, south, east, west. Get it? Kind of got a feel of that? They were coming this way. <laughs> That's the best I could do. I could have put a picture on the screen, but... That's what I got. Sorry. All right, so they were on the east side, uh, the other side of the Mount of Olives that would have been on the east gate, okay? This is important because in Ezekiel chapters 10 and 11, it talks about the glory of the Lord departed towards the Mount of Olives. But it also says in chapter 43 of Ezekiel, that when the glory of God would return, that it would come from the east. So, where Jesus was and when he would come back and when he was coming towards that east gate, it was kind of a fulfillment of this concept of this text. Do you see it? He was coming from the east in towards that eastern gate. But the thing is, is it... It was, but it wasn't. I mean, it was him. He is the Messiah, and it was the fulfillment of that text. But it wasn't complete, okay? It did set it up, and the, it, it gets there, mostly. <laughs> it doesn't complete it because that comes later. All right? So that is one geographic kind of where they actually were. Number two. Jesus had already been quietly telling people who he was. Uh, but he wasn't really publicly telling people who he was as Messiah. He was doing the things where he would, you know, heal somebody and he would say, shh, don't tell anybody, right? And he'd say, you know, hey, I heal you, but don't tell anybody. We all know how that goes, Right? When the Messiah, or Jesus, I don't know, I'm, I'm not sure how it would be for you, but if Jesus was in my midst, and if he would do something for me that marvelous, I don't know if I could be one that would just be able to stop and say, I can't tell anybody, no, I can't do that. I would be like, woohoo, you know, it's going to be out there, <laughs> And people are going to know, right? They're going to know. <laughs> They're going to know. How would they know? They're going to know. And the word spreads. I mean, if something's out there, it's going to go. So people around kind of knew what was going on. He really didn't say it publicly. Okay? So... It got way ahead of Jesus, even though he didn't want it to. And people were making assumptions of what, why, how, and when Jesus was going to do or say or act, right? They were all making these assumptions. And there's a saying about what an assumption does, right? It makes a donkey out of you and me, right? <laughs> okay, I'm going to leave that there. Each character in this situation had their own agenda, right? Okay. Number four, Jesus sends two disciples to get a donkey uh, to ride in on the temple. Did you know that there's a step there? <laughs> Move a little bit further up here. Sorry. Um, did you know that this is the first time 
that Jesus didn't walk somewhere. He walked everywhere except when he rode on this donkey. This is the first time that he would ride something somewhere. Hmm. That's a change, right? It is something that is different. Okay. So I'm going to hit three details that push this story from a change from where everyone thinks that they know what's going to happen and what they think that they understand, but they actually don't understand anything. They completely understand nothing. Okay? Number one, why a donkey? Okay? So for the purpose of Jesus' understanding, it makes sense, right? This animal was never ridden before or had a yoke on it, okay? It was a fresh animal that was to carry the sacrifice, okay? There's three different texts in which talks about um, an animal that would carry a sacrifice. In the Old Testament, there was one about... Um, an animal that would carry a sacrifice for something for murder back in Exodus. There was one that was about, it was like a red heifer. There was one that couldn't have a yoke. There was one that was uh, other things. There was three different times in which the Bible talks about not being yoked. Okay? Um, But to others, um, they, they didn't see or understand it being about the sacrifice riding on it, they saw it more as it being a king riding on the donkey, right? And kings had ridden on donkeys before, um, and that had happened. And that was actually a prophetic concept that was there. We see that uh, it was fulfilling a prophecy from 1 Kings chapter 1, um, and in Samuel chapter 7, 2 Samuel chapter 7, and in Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9. We see that in the line of David, David was trying to find the next that would be, and it was, he was talking with God, and it was about Solomon, He was talking about the concept of who would be next or who would bring the line, um, the physical line, to bring the kingdom. And the funny thing is, is God was thinking more further into the future, and David was just kind of thinking of right now. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? And God was thinking, no, I'm thinking for forever. Um, and he was thinking more of Messiah kind of concept, and that's where Zechariah 9. Um, and there are, it's funny because some would say that, he, that Jesus was being provocative uh, to the Romans and to the Jews by riding in on a donkey into, um, but maybe Jesus just kind of knew what he was doing. Um, <laughs> and I think he did. Number two, uh, in our text today, it says branches, but it's Palm Sunday. I know that we're in Mark chapter 11, but it says, it says branches. In John chapter 12, verses 12, it talks about palm branches. There's a major connection uh, with palm branches and Palm Sunday and with uh, a story from the past. Uh, the connection is a story with the Maccabees, where this, the family of the Maccabees come and they drove out the Roman, Roman government out of the city of Jerusalem. And that for a time, they ruled the city. They celebrated their, the liberation from Rome and they waved palm branches. And it was a symbol of liberation from Rome. The city was taken back over from, from the Maccabees by Rome later on, but there was a big significant of the palm branches. And here, these people were using them as a symbol of freedom from tyranny. Okay? The government, of the government that was oppressing them. The Jews, the Jewish people thought that Jesus was about to do the same thing here and now. 
Jesus was coming to rule in a completely different way. The symbolism, though, is not lost. Jesus, for Jesus does overthrow the tyranny of oppression, of oppression of sin, but not the government in which they were thinking. Next, the third. They were shouting Hosanna. Okay. Yesha, okay, means to help or to save. Here, it is connected to the root word, which is uh, also the root word, which is connected to the root word, which is the name of Joshua, okay? To help and save and Joshua, okay? So it's Hosanna that's connected with the Hebrew, okay? So literally, they are saving, and Jesus' name is derived with the Yeshua part, okay? So literally, they are saying, if you were to connect it all together, they are saying, save us now, O Jesus, in saying Hosanna. It gives this awesome meaning to that word for us, doesn't it? When we sing Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. It does to me. I sit here, and I'm listening to this song, and I'm going, wow, that is just amazing to listen to. Save us, save us, Jesus. Um, to have that concept. So these people, they are here. They are doing this thing, this triumphal entry, and we're, ex we're excited. It's a great misunderstanding. For us, it is exciting, and <laughs> it's an exciting time. But it's totally misunderstood because they are thinking that it's going to be bringing a governmental rule, but it's not. It's a different type of leadership. It's a different type of change. So here we are. The air is buzzing with tension and energy. Jesus comes riding in on a donkey into the occupying kingdom of Rome with wealth and military power, and into a kingdom of simmering violent revolution that's about ready to happen, with their weapons ready to damage. The, there's Jewish zealots that are there, right? They are ready to go. Uh, they're ready to take over because they think that they're about their right and that this is going to happen. And Jesus rides right into the middle of it. These people, they come out of the city. There's this, this difference. These people, they throw down their coats. They're waving these symbolic branches that are about liberation and freedom. And I think Jesus is like, yes. Maybe you're getting it. Maybe you're understanding. <laughs> but they're not. <laughs> and I think that there's three or four different ways that people are not understanding. Jesus rode into the middle of it. And the thing is, is that Jesus did not join in with the ranks of these Jewish zealots with their weapons. And he didn't side with the religious leaders or the powers of Rome. Jesus confronted the assumptions, assumptions inherent in our expectations and presented a different kind of kingdom, a different definition of power. While the Romans assumed Christ might stir up another revolution, and the people on the streets assumed he would affirm God's covenant with Israel by ushering in a new earthly Davidic kingdom, Jesus introduced another way, this new kingdom. A deeper covenant that found its strength in simplicity, its wealth through generosity, its leadership through service and its power through sacrifice. P. 
people thought that there was going to be this great riot that was going to happen and that many Romans was, were going to, I mean, that they thought the blood was going to just run in the streets. And there was no blood that ran in the streets. But by the end of the week, we know that only one person's blood runs in the streets. We, we go from Palm Sunday is this triumphal entry, and it's this Sunday that is this great misunderstanding that leads to a week that begins with life, but it ends with death. It starts with celebration, and somehow it ends in catastrophe. It starts... It starts with cries of Hosanna. Save us now, Jesus. Save us now. And ends with crucify. Many things happen in this last week of Jesus' life. Some are the most important things that help us understand his love for us and how we can show love to others. It is. It's, it's a wonderful Sunday. And I've always loved Palm Sunday because it's all woo and excitement and, and all of these branches. And those branches are great things because of what they do represent. Because they do represent that liberation. And for us, they represent liberation from sin. They do. Jesus did something amazing. And this misunderstanding, it, it was not just from the Jews, it was from the Romans. I mean, the Romans, they, they wanted to somehow keep that Pax Romania, that, that peace. And somehow they, they gummed it up too. <laughs> you know, the Jews messed it up. <laughs> and it was just all a bunch of complete misunderstanding. But we get to have this time where we see the, gl the glory of Jesus riding in on a donkey, where we see the king in kind of his glory riding in on a donkey, where people are worshiping him how they should and how we should see him. Even if they don't understand it, this is how we should see and worship our king, right? We should be worshiping him like that. But it leads to something. It leads to something that's greater than that, which is even better, which makes me more excited. But the thing is, is that we got to go through this next week which is hard and not fun. He does some amazing things. He has a last supper with his, with his disciples. And that's on, usually on Monday, Thursday, inside of Holy Week. And then there's Good Friday. And we're going to have a, a Good Friday service online. So if you would would like to, we'll have it on Facebook. And uh, we'll walk through some, kind of some of that and... Um, we'll, we'll do that. Me and Pastor Valerie will work through um, that. Um, and then we'll have Easter and the resurrection and what that means. And it'll be an exciting time. But this last week, it was, it was complete change. From the time in which he rode in, where they were saying, save us, save us, completely changed. But today, they wave palm branches. And they misunderstood, but we do get to celebrate that misunderstanding and say, 
glory, and it's a triumphal entry. Come on, come on, yes. This is our king. This is the king that we get to serve. We know the story. We do. They didn't. We do. And we are excited. Now, if you don't know Jesus, and he is not the Lord of your life, and you need to know this Jesus today, Pastor Valerie, or I, or even Pastor Ken, we would love to talk to you, or pray with you, or we would love to talk with you, or if you'd like to message us on Facebook, we'd like to talk with you about what it means to have Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Because this could be the greatest Easter for you this year. Because it is an amazing thing if you see that you might be going through a great misunderstanding in your life right now. The fact of the matter is, is that Jesus can change everything. Even if you're going through some of the worst things in your life. So let's pray. Father, I thank you for today. We thank you for Jesus and for just the triumphal entry. We thank you for um, his just willingness to be able to walk through what is going to happen this next week. We thank you for this day where people will cried out, save us now. Hosanna, Hosanna. And treated it as a time where he came. Even if it was misunderstood. Father, we thank you for the blessings. We thank you for the love. And I pray that you will just be with us as we start this holy week together. Keep us this day. And Father, if you, today, if, if people who are watching or here with us do not know your son, I pray that they would seek after us and see one of us as pastors and come and talk to us. Father, we love you. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. You are dismissed.